On this day five years ago, I created this YouTube channel, and since then both myself and my way of making videos has changed more than I can fathom. In this video, I want to show you how I make my videos, and how I overcome the challenges I'm faced with, because I find it very interesting how other content creators do so. I usually learn some tricks from them, so I guess I should share some of my tricks too. I'll also discuss some ideas I have for how I should make future videos, because writing the script has made me realise a lot that I should be doing better, and I got some interesting ideas out of it. First, I think it's important to understand the sort of content I make. I primarily make Minecraft Let's Plays with commentary. I feel like this is such a big thing that it should be a genre on YouTube if they were to further categorize the Minecraft section. I do make other types of videos, such as other games, and sometimes videos just for fun, but my main priority is Minecraft. I think it's also important that you know what PC I have to work with, these videos being PC games. My PC is a very average gaming PC. When I was writing the script, I wrote out everything that I should say for this, but I realized that it would take too long, so you should just be able to see everything on screen right now. And let me explain the high storage that I have. The three SSDs are for games, and the one terabyte hard drive is for recording videos, and you'll see why I need it in a few minutes. My next PC is likely going to be completely walls to the wall, so it's going to be even better for anything I do in terms of content creation. Quickly before proceeding, I thought it's also important to note that for almost all games, I use a mouse and keyboard and never a controller. The only time it's different is in the driving simulation, where I use a steering wheel and a pedal set with a shifter. Before recording, I try to make sure I have some kind of plan for what I'll be doing. I often don't, as when I have the opportunity to record is random, so I have little decision time in that moment, because one day I might want to do one thing, next another. This is especially bad for my Minecraft videos. Something important to note is that this video is the second video I've done where I'm using a script. My videos are not scripted, and I don't think gameplay videos should be, however it is important to think of what you'll be saying next before recording the next clip, as that way there's less hesitation and provides a better viewing experience. Now, I record most of my videos where possible with fraps. I know that it is very limited, but its values for me far outweigh the values of something like OBS, at least for the video. Fraps has zero compression and is as true to the original image as possible, which makes the file sizes of even minutes of certain gameplay many gigabytes, such as Just Cause 4 videos that are work in progress. This is why I have a whole terabyte dedicated to recording, and some other things such as archiving old videos that I want to keep. OBS, however, I find has too much compression makes the videos darker than they should be, so I avoid using it for games where the graphics are important. An issue with Fraps is that it completely destroys any FPS you might have, which is why I only use it for casual games, as something like CSGO becomes unplayable. It's not all that bad, only bad in competitive games where it really matters, but it does take a big hit to performance. I use lossless RGB capture and record at full resolution, as well as limit the frame rate to an appropriate 30fps on most videos. Which brings me to the next issue. When limiting frame rate, it helps to keep it more or less constant, which is good for viewing, but it can only make the FPS a multiple of what you're recording at. So for me, it's 30 and 60, as it will only be at the higher one if the game is currently able to go past it. It will never hit 90 FPS because my monitor is only 75 Hz and I play with VSync enabled in most games. Another key issue with Fraps is the lack of control of your audio. You can have your Windows audio and your mic audio, but you cannot change the volume of either. This is why I record only desktop audio with Fraps and use OBS to record my mic audio with different filters to a separate file. It's actually very simple, because I have the same keybind to record for both Fraps and OBS, so audio is always synced up, sort of. I always use OBS for videos where my face is present. Rare, but I do sometimes, and it's more than perfect for those non-gaming videos. I have released a couple of CSGO videos that I had to record with OBS due to the FPS drop I'd get with Fraps. Trying to get the highest FPS out of the game requires me to lower certain settings in OBS, which is very noticeable in parts of those CSGO videos, which is exactly why I wouldn't trust it for a sightseeing based game, which I'd put Minecraft under. Moving on, I don't have much to work with in terms of audio. Sure I have 5 ways of capturing my voice, but only one is perfect for my uses. I'm a bit of an audiophile, and over the years I've experimented with many headphones and microphones to get the best sound, but being on a tight budget of zero money, I must make do with what I have. In fact, I don't even use a microphone. I've been using a webcam for the last few years, and it is amazing. It is the Microsoft HD 3000 webcam, and the built-in mic is just so good for the price of nothing that I paid for it. You can buy it from Microsoft's website for £30, which honestly surprised me considering its age, but the audio is still far better than my main webcam, the Logitech C920, which sounds tinny and disgusting. As I've already mentioned, I record my audio to separate file using OBS. With the filters that I use, I am able to cut out background noise and level out my voice a bit while I record, which I think is much easier and better to do than use the raw audio and try to edit that. 
problem that I have with recording in the OBS is that all the audio is much quieter than it should be and in normal Minecraft videos I usually amplify my voice by 7 decibels. On a quick thought, I know exactly why I must deal with it and it's because I had my microphone input at 80% in Windows. That's because much higher than it would be too loud when I used to record directly with Fraps. I should look into upping the volume now, but first this video. I've recently learned a new trick from another YouTuber to bass boost the audio after recording and use that to give a richer sounding voice, which I will be trying out in this video. This should also help make the audio loud enough to not have to amplify it further, however I doubt I would do it much on this channel, especially in Minecraft videos where I frequently cut. Here's why. I've played around with the OBS quite extensively and I cannot get it to output an audio file that I can then open no matter what container and encoders I use, it must always be a video aspect in it or it will crash. Audacity can only open audio files and that not all of them, which means that to do the bass boost to the audio I must render the individual files converting them to a .bav format, but for more than a few it will get so tedious to do that I don't see the benefits outweighing the negatives. I've also just tested it as I was writing the script and pushing the bass by 7 decibels didn't seem like it would be enough. I'd have to push in the video to check if I have to do another step, however easy, it means I'm not really gaining much. But on further thought, I see a massive benefit here as I'm writing this, which I'll get onto when I talk about editing. While we're on the topic of audio, I thought I should quickly mention how I make my music. The shortest version is, I use a free program called Linux Multimedia Studio, LMMS for short, but I plan on going further with real instruments and better software. I'll be making a separate video on this while going more in depth. Now I'm on page 4 of my script and I still haven't talked about how I make a Minecraft video, so here it goes. I start by playing the game, looking for something to do in the video. I usually try to stick to a rotor of series so I don't do too much on one series at once neglecting the others. Balance is important. When I'm ready to start recording, I start up Fraps and OBS and hit record. When I'm done with the clip, I'll just hit the record key again and it stops recording and finishes saving the files ready for me to use. I could have anywhere between 10 and 50 files by the time I'm done recording the video. The more the better for the viewer, but more work for me. I'll often do large grindy projects off camera such as clearing out the water around an ocean monument because that's really something for streaming which I have done in that project. I find that it's important to capture some progress of things like that because it gives the viewer an idea of how long it takes to do stuff like that. What I was very disappointed about with that video was that I've spent over 30 if not 40 or more hours working and I only got 11 minutes or so of footage from it. It also took several months to end the video because the project was so big and time wasn't available at that time. Lesson learned there was to not do too big of a project without a good plan of how to record the video and to also prioritize that over other games, so that my hair doesn't grow several inches from start to finish of the video. Now if I think of it, taking a photo just before recording and just after finishing recording could show how long I spent on that project. Any idea? After I finish recording all the clips, I will either start editing right away or leave it for when I have more time. I find that I can make time for editing much easier than for recording, so often I have a lot of time when I'm available to record, I will use it all until I run out of time or my hard drive is full, which has happened before. Surprisingly it didn't screw over the file saved, but rather just didn't record the screen in the last few minutes. Luckily my beautiful voice was saved to a different file, which I was able to keep recording. To edit my videos, I use a pirated copy of Cyberlink PowerDirector 14, because I can't afford anything else. In reality I should just pirate a copy of Premiere Pro, but I found that now compared to 5 years ago, it's much harder to find a download that has no malware. So I think when I get to that balls to the wall PC, I'm also going to subscribe to an Adobe package. Maybe I'll rip that so I don't have to pay more than a month, who knows. The files I work with are .avi for video and mp4 for the audio clips. Luckily this outdated very much in need of replacement program can open many file types so I have no problems with it other than all the problems it does have. It is so limited in what I can do with it, that compared to Premiere Pro I might as well be using Movie Maker. I'm sure the new versions have much more to offer, but the 2014 version does not. Over the years I found many clever ways to do things that seem so easy to do on proper software, which I'm very glad for because it gave me a lot of experience with editing. Fortunately it is rare for me to need to do much editing in a Minecraft video, so what I tend to do is open up a file where I have a template saved, which is basically the intro and outro for a series, and put all the files I need into the program. Select all video and place it on track 2, just after the intro. I'll then move the outro to where it needs to be. The audio is a little trickier. The reason I placed the video onto track 2 is because of the video element of the audio, which I'm too lazy to go through and remove in the editor which prioritizes the bottom layers, so the video I want to be shown is on the bottom. I then manually go through every audio clip and sync it up with the video. This is easy but time consuming. The software is very unstable for me sometimes and I often crash when working with the audio files here. It's easy to sync up because all I must do is align the ends of the audio clips with the ends of the video clips. 
I'm not sure why OBS starts recording at random time intervals, but it always ends the recording at the same time as Fraps, or close enough that I can just sync them as such. Then the worst task must be done, amplifying the volume. This is by far the worst for me because all the crashes happen for me when I'm working with keyframes, which I must do for this because there isn't a tool that does it for me, and because doing the audio in the timeline isn't precise enough. Therefore I think by rendering the audio files to an audio file type when using Audacity could be better in the long term, especially with videos such as this where there are a few if more than one audio clip. After I do all the editing I must render my final video. For most videos I use the H.264 encoder mostly because I don't understand what I must do to make the H.265 encoder work here. All my content is recorded in 1080p, so usually I render in 1080p 30fps to an mp4 container. My Minecraft Time Traveler series is recorded in 60fps because it is easy enough to run the early versions of the game so for that and other 60fps videos I use the MT2S container and render at 60fps. I'm not sure why I don't get more fps options with both containers because they use the same encoder and support both frame rates. I'm very glad that a while ago I did my research and experimentation on how I render my videos because with my current setup even the 60fps videos are rendered approximately 15 times faster than the total video length is. It takes less than half the video length to render a 30fps video and I find that amazing especially with the quality I get out of it. Not to mention that the file size is reasonable and takes 1 minute to upload 1 minute of video with my current internet situation. Now there have been some exceptions recently about how I render the videos and that is purely to get the best quality on YouTube. The Dirt Rally 2.0 video I did recently was rendered and uploaded in 4K even though it's only 1080p. You may be thinking to yourself, why on earth would I do that? And the short answer would be that it reduces compression artifacting on both the rendered video and the uploaded video. You see, YouTube does its own compression on videos and on 4K it is much less noticeable than on 1080p videos. That's why I watch all my videos in 8K even though I only have a 1080p monitor. The Dirt Rally video had a lot of small details and movements in it, and YouTube completely butchers the video with its compression if it's 1080p, so some of my videos may be 1080p disguised as 4k. When I upload videos, I rarely make them public right away. I always schedule them to be uploaded on a certain day, almost always at 6am. I find that this time works well for me because I can wake up and have a few hours of analytics ready to see, not that there was much to see in the first place. This also gives the video time to be processed and be seen in the full resolution, as I'm sure most of you have been early to a video somewhere and it was still at 360p. Also, some are on private since upload because I was hoping to finish recording the entire series before releasing them. I guess I figured I'd have no time for videos anymore and I'm glad I started by doing that rather than making them public sooner. I doubt I'll finish recording it for a while but they're there. Most YouTubers use custom thumbnails for their videos, but for the most part I use the best one out of the three that YouTube offers me. Sometimes if I want something really specific I'll do a bare minimum custom thumbnail, using a screenshot from the video or from Minecraft. All my time traveler series use custom thumbnails which I get from the video itself after it was rendered. To make it I simply go into paint.net, a great alternative to Photoshop, and paste the screenshot into it and change the episode number. Sometimes I forget how to do it so I have a little text file in the folder that explains the process to me and all the values I need to use. Most of my non Minecraft series or videos use completely custom thumbnails but not my vanilla series, and I won't ever use them for it until the next series in which I probably will. After uploading I manage my videos by putting them into categorized playlists which I think is epic, having many large series which creates a catalog of playlists. Something about having many things categorized and sorting them makes me happy, and as a viewer I find it useful when series are sorted so I can easily binge watch them. It is rare for me to delete videos, very few have been. I have privated and unlisted many, because I don't want them to be seen anymore but I don't want to delete them because they have been made and uploaded and maybe I'll need something from them one day as a reference, maybe they'll even be publicized once again. Also if I delete them, or even private, which is why most are only unlisted, the analytics for that are lost and deducted from the channel overall, which would literally be moving backwards. I find that YouTube's new studio doesn't show me the overall analytics anyway, or not very easily, but publicly you'd only see what was gained on public videos. I am making this video for the 5 year anniversary of me starting this channel, and I must say that when I started I thought I had a few thousand subscribers in the first year, and by this point I expected to be able to make YouTube my career, but boy was I wrong. Only at exactly 4 years and 11 months have I reached 100 subscribers. I don't know, maybe it's less now, but as of writing the script it is around 100. I'm only acknowledging it and I don't care to celebrate, as thinking about it is rather pathetic no matter the length of time it took to get there. I will most certainly celebrate one more zero on the end, as that is when I'd be able to start making money from all this again. I guess thinking about the future of the channel, I'm hoping to start uploading normal videos more regularly, as in the last few months it has mostly been unedited live streams from my Twitch channel. I'll also be starting a couple of new channels and I wish to keep my identity on them anonymous, so if they ever get big enough you might find them. 
and on those channels I'm going to increase my production quality to max. Planning on getting myself a professional XLR microphone and a decent back, and my audio is going to be nice without all the editing I must do. The channel could either start to grow faster, which would prompt me to make more videos here, or it'll stay at nothing and I'll eventually really slow down on this and move on to other ideas I have. However, staying focused on this channel, my main Minecraft series has been going for almost 5 years now, and I really wanted to get to episode 100 by the 5 year mark. So that's a nice 20 episodes per year. I guess that won't be happening because I have almost no will to record that much. As I've said in the series, I am going to end the world on episode 100, because I've kind of run out of stuff to do, and it needs a fresh start. The future series is going to be so good though, if I ever get to it. I have so many giant plans and I cannot wait to work on it. There are still a few things I'm trying to decide about it, but I know I'm going to be building huge things and making it amongst the best survival worlds there have ever been. Overall, this video has started to deviate from the original purpose of it, which was a simple, how do I make my videos question, and I went in depth about many other things, but since I'm not making that many videos these days, I thought it was important to address some things now, and after all everything was somewhat relevant. All that's left now is for me to figure out how to make a scripted video like this, and I guess in another 5 years time I'll discuss that too.